Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today I've got a little welding project going on. I'm building a three-legged shop stool with an adjustable height seat. And today's video is sp a sponsored video, sponsored by Strong Hand Tools. And I'm happy to talk about their products because they have cool stuff and re very reasonable prices. So the reason a three-legged stool is because with a three-legged stool, all three feet always touch. And there's nothing more annoying than get on an unlevel surface and have one, one leg rock when you're trying to be steady TIG welding something or whatever. So I'm using six pieces of flat bar, 3 16 by 3 quarter, 6 inches long. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm also using some hex nuts and some all thread. And I'm going to weld those flat bar on each side of the hex. So I'm using three one inch nuts. And some of this stuff was laying around the shop. Some of it I had to buy. I'm using a piece of one inch all threaded rod, 18 inches long. And three pieces of half inch pipe cut to 19 and a half inches long. That's not, that doesn't have to be exact. I just took a stab, went ahead and cut them square. I'm going to have to cut some angles on these ends to fit up at the top before I'm done. But for right now, they're just square cut. And now, one thing that's critical here is I'm going to have to put some anti-spatter, my favorite anti-spatter compound here on this all thread, because when I'm welding those bar stock on there, they've got gaps in them. If I get any spatter on this all thread that sticks, it's game over. So I like to use PAM on the table itself, on the nozzle, and everything uh, because one thing it doesn't have a MSDS that's four pages long it's it's edible and everything so I figure it's it's uh, it's got to be a pretty good alternative and it works so here's what I'm doing you can see I'm just holding this stuff on eyeballing it centering it up to each side of the hex so I'm gonna wind up with a, a six-sided hex shaped thing here with flat bar and it's gonna have some pretty good gaps in it now Again, I'm using some stuff that was laying around. Ideally, I wouldn't have any gaps. I think maybe one inch might have worked if I shaved a corner off, but I didn't have any one inch. So what I'm doing, I'm leaving that one nut as a free floater. I'm just putting a tack inboard from the nut. Because if I weld that nut in and I weld the other nut in and weld all these welds together, it's going to bind up tight. Now you can see right now it's all nice and loosey-goosey and I'm hoping to have that thing nice and loose when I'm through welding here as well by leaving the one nut not welded. It can't go anywhere. It's going to be locked in and really it's, it's more like a guide than it is anything else so that the seat doesn't wiggle. We'll see what happens. Again, the gap here is a good almost a quarter inch, but welding a quarter inch with MIG downhill is a piece of cake. It's like falling off a log. As long as you can set it too hot, and I'm set here at about 17 volts and probably about 230 inches a minute using 030 wire. There's a lot of leeway. I could go hotter, I could go a little colder. It'll still work. This is getting almost full penetration doing this with the gap that wide. It's not really advisable to use gaps that wide. It just happens to be what the gap that was in there using what I had on hand. So again, I stop short of welding all the way to the nut. And you can see it still, it still spins freely because that nut that's not welded has room to wiggle. Now I'm using a set of uh, like trammel points here and I'm going to scribe a circle. I'm using the little ball lock bolt here for a center point. And you might remember, if you've been following me a while, I did this video a while back. It reminds me of this. I had to make a big circle to line up this big aluminum fixture. Had an inner hub and an outer flange, and the dimensions were kind of critical. But um, using, using the same build pro table and the fixturing here, it made a complex job uh, really easy getting these spokes lined up and indicated centered up. So back to the stool here. The reason I'm, um, reason I'm marking a, a circle is because I've got three legs. And so they will all fit in a circle. I could have just as easily made a triangle, I guess, but a circle is easy to do, and I'll just wind up having to make sure my legs all pretty much go out the same length, and uh, it'll get them close enough. And now to line up the, the, the riser piece, I'm going to leave that all threaded piece in the hub, in that piece I just welded up, and I'm going to use these V-blocks here. They have a, a little O-ring on them, so they pop in either on the table or on the on riser pieces. To hold round stuff. And with that O-ring on there, when you pop them in, they don't just wiggle and flop around and fall back out. They'll, they'll stay in an in a upright position like this. So that's extremely handy. So I'm going to line this piece of all thread up with that uh, little bolt, the ball lock bolt that I, that I put in the uh, center point of that circle. 
and I've got this 90 degree riser piece and we use this little uh, mag spring clamp here which is a kind of a one-handed affair you can use I, I work by myself all the time so I need one-handed clamps but with one hand I can clamp that there it's got a little swivel V pad with magnets on it that it won't damage the threads if I if I'm ginger with it nice and easy and now I've got them lined up one way because the holes are all lined up one way but I've got to line them up this way too so I'm just eyeballing this I could put up some kind of measuring device up there but I'm not building a Swiss watch today it's just a three three-legged stool so by eyeballing it I figure I'm gonna be within a sixteenth of an inch and I'm definitely plumb and you see my little circle mark there that's where I'm gonna put my legs the bottom of the legs and now I've got to get an angle transferred to this piece to know where to cut it and the way that I'm gonna do that is this is a little simple protractor I'm gonna get the angle lock it in and then I'm going to use that protractor to put a soapstone mark on that piece of half inch pipe and all I need to mark on is one side because I'm going to cut it on a little vertical bandsaw now you may remember I made this little stand for this porter cable porta band here handiest thing I use it I use this all the time for stuff like this but I've got a little platform here and so rest it on there and just pushing it through there on the soapstone mark is going to be accurate enough of a cut for something like this but swag off-road offers the ready-made portable bandsaw stands that are, are really good I just decided I needed some material for a video so I made my own for this porter cable I'll try to put a link on this video and go back to it you know, on how I built that so we'll see how this how does this fit it fits pretty good see I've got six sides so I've got flat flat sides here to line this stuff up to so I didn't have to worry about coping it like I would if it was a round hub and so it winds up being just about right to the outside of the, these pipes to that circle and now I can tack them all up now I probably should have drawn a triangle within that circle to get these things precisely spaced but I just kind of uh, went by how it looked coming off each flat side of that hex and the end product turned out just fine I was concerned too much about video than I was about making the part. But I think you can see that it just makes short work of a little job like this. A little, a little when you're doing something that's round or a three-legged something with angles, it can throw you a curve if you don't have the if you don't have tooling and stuff to do it with. You wind up having to tack stuff together and take it take it back apart and whatnot. But so I've got this thing all like I want it all three legs touching with everything plumb it's time to weld these out now I got a lot more tacks on them before I welded it so they wouldn't move and it's time to weld them now and I'm using about for this about 18 volts 250 inches a minute of 030 wire diameter inches a minute of wire feed speed using 030 wire and I'm using this little overlapping E type technique camera in my way and everything so doesn't look as good as I would hoped but it might shake a little bit but it won't fall off and then I just decided to put those little feet for the bottom and I'm gonna make a seat and that's gonna to have to come in the next uh, part two of this video I'm gonna use this little round thing here that I cut off from a previous job that I did I'm gonna use that for part of the seat I'm going to tack it on that nut, put some stiffeners on there, and put a little lip on the bottom to stiffen it up and get a piece of padding for the top. But that's going to have to come in a part two to this video because I ran out of time, didn't quite get it done. Now, I was at Fabtech in Vegas, and I took a few clips just so you could see the extensive product line that Stronghand has, toggle clamps and fabrication clamps, fixturing for framing, and just about anything you want to hold. Some new products they've added to their line are this heavy-duty German-made fixturing table and also this economy modular welding table called a fixture point. I'm kind of excited to see how this thing works. It looks like it's going to be a way for people to kind of dip their toe in the water and uh, get acquainted to modular fixturing. Well, anyway, that is it for today, but I make videos every single week, so stay tuned.